My name is Karen Panter and I'm an extension horticulture specialist here. I do half of my job as an extension, 25% I spend teaching in the classroom, and the rest is uh, kind of a mix of research and administrative issues and advising students and various other things. Um, I have got two high tunnels over here that this is what I'm basically talking about. My background is in greenhouse crop production and management and I do have a greenhouse section here right behind us. The door is open and so after this evening if you want to wander in there you're more than welcome to. Um, but what we've been doing for the last two years is a project involving production in the greenhouse and also in the high tunnels of the same crops. In August, um, just a couple weeks ago actually, uh, I had a graduate student just finish and Andrea, her poster was up over here and unfortunately when the rain started to drop a little bit, the poster came down. But um, she did some work on fresh cut sunflowers and we grew the sunflowers year round in the greenhouse and then we grew in the summertime this past summer in the two high tunnels. And the difference, anybody know what the difference is between tunnels and, and uh, greenhouses? Some of you know. <laughs> okay. The basic difference is that there's virtually no inputs, as you can tell, with the high tunnels. The only thing there really is input as far as water. Um, they're not heated, they're not cooled, other than rolling up the sides during the warmer times of the, of the year. Um, the greenhouse, on the other hand, we can obviously grow year-round in because we have heating, we have cooling, we have all of the environmental controls, and that's what the basic difference is. Um, but what we've done with the sunflowers was Andrea did basically the same thing with three different cultivars of fresh-cut sunflowers in the greenhouse and the tunnels, and we determined that there were all sorts of really interesting things. They can very successfully be grown in both environments. The plant growth and development in each one was very different, however. Um, the plants in the greenhouse uh, looked very different anatomically. They grew differently. They produced at a different time frame than the ones in the tunnels. And so we found some really, really interesting information. And you might also see um, that there are, uh, there's a center aisle in each of the tunnels. And so what we've done is planted on either side of the aisle in each of these tunnels. So we have a north location, a south location, an east and a west. And the reason we did that was because we've been trying to determine if there's um, a difference in growth and development of any plant depending on the orientation of the high tunnels. And as it turns out, surprise, surprise, yes there is. Um, we get very different growth parameters, um, very different development depending on where, they, where the plants are in each of these two tunnels. Um, the general recommendation for a freestanding structure like this is to have them oriented east-west. Well, what we're finding, and if you look at it from the side, if you're looking at it directly um, from the side, you'll notice that this east-west tunnel is kind of listing this way <laughs> because the wind <laughs> has pushed it. Um, and the other one doesn't do that, obviously. And I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, preference at this point. We'll see what Casey finds out, but um, the north-south tunnel seems to be a little bit easier to cope with. It, um, the wind goes through it rather than slamming into that west wall there. Um, anyway, we're finding some really interesting things, and uh, Andrea finished up in August, or just a couple of weeks ago, it's still August, um, but she's now working on her doctorate at Washington State University in plant pathology, and we're very proud of her. Um, Casey Seals, who you have met several times this, this evening, is now working with me on his master's degree and he's kind of following up what Andrea did, but he's using fresh cut herbs instead. And so he's got his project in the greenhouse and the same herbs are being grown in the two high tunnels. And so you're more than welcome to go and look and see what they all look like. But we're growing them just like the sunflowers. We grew them at the same spacings at the same times. Um, they were all harvested um, at the same time. And Casey with the herbs is doing a little bit of a different thing because you er are harvest herbs kind of continuously. It's not just a one-shot thing. With the cut sunflowers, what we did was grew them. Uh, one, one seed equals one flower, 
and then we harvested them and they were done. With Casey, it's the same plants that he's working on and harvesting over a long period of time. And so his data is just now coming in. He's done two harvests in the greenhouse so far. They were just planted in May. And he's done three harvests in the high tunnels so far. No, it was the other way around. Three in the greenhouse and two in the tunnels. So he's just now getting to uh, some interesting numbers and he's just basically doing fresh weights on them at this point. Um, so we'll have interesting data for this entire year. We'll grow through the greenhouse through next fall, another year from now. And then we'll also next summer have work going on in the high tunnels again. So um, we'll continue the tunnel work this fall until mother nature tells us otherwise. <laughs> um, the sides at this time of year, they've been up since continuously since June, but we will start rolling the sides down in the evening when temperatures get down in the low 40s. We want to trap the heat inside there as long as we can in the evening. Um, they do reach ambient temperature, obviously, but if you can trap warm in there, air in there in the evening, um, it takes longer to reach ambient. So. Um, Management of high tunnels is very different from anything else that you'll run across. They're definitely not something that you can just put up and walk away from, <laughs> and neither is a greenhouse. So, are there any questions about what we're doing high tunnel wise? Yes? Since you had a difference, uh, you saw last year uh, the sunflowers, can you describe the differences, the advantages versus yeah, the question is, what exactly are the differences in the high tunnels? What we're seeing is, and this was true with the sunflowers, um, if I remember correctly, and Casey is starting to see some of this as well. The plants on the north side and the east side are producing more fresh weight than the west side or the south side. And if you think about it, the south side gets some direct sun at certain times of the day. The east side gets morning sun. The west side gets the west after it. But the north side doesn't get any direct light. So it's kind of interesting that we're seeing a little bit higher production as far as fresh weight on the north side. So there's some other things going on here. So yeah, it's very interesting. Um, the greenhouse is a completely different creature. And so we're seeing completely different numbers in the greenhouse. There. there was another hand over here. Yeah. Well, uh, so what's better, the greenhouse or the high tunnel? Um, well, what's better, the greenhouse or the high tunnel is the question. And that is not an easy one to answer because it depends on the pocketbook. Um, a greenhouse, I'm partial to greenhouses myself. I, my background is all in greenhouse crop production. So I, anytime I can be in a greenhouse, that's what I'll pick. But they are expensive to put up and operate. These, once you put them up, um, they're fairly well, they're easy to maintain, not terribly expensive. We did recover the greenhouse or the high tunnels this summer, and I think the covers, I spent a total of about $600 on the new plastic. It wasn't terribly expensive. But it just kind of a dependent, you know, for most people, the high tunnels are going to be sufficient because you can grow earlier in the spring and later in the fall. But for people who want year-round production, you're going to have to have a greenhouse. What is the life expectancy of a high tunnel in The life expectancy of a tunnel here is probably dependent uh, almost entirely on what it's made of. Um, the tunnels, these are made of steel. They're galvanized steel, inch and a half steel. And so they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, so the life expectancy of these things is probably going to be 20 to 30 years easily. And the only reason I say that is because the end walls are, um, it's the same material that's on the greenhouses, same stuff, polycarbonate. And um, that stuff is rated for, I believe, about 20 years. So, But these things indefinitely, actually, as long as you keep recovering and everything, you can grow in them forever. The, the initial idea of high tunnels, believe it or not, was to, to lengthen the season in various spots in a field. They were initially developed so that you could actually pick them up and move them from one place to another in field production. And we have kind of gotten away from that. They're actually temporary structures. There's no concrete in here. They're not. They are anchored. Um, and they're dug in, and the posts are in about 18 inches, two feet. Um, but they shouldn't last indefinitely. 
There are other structures um, made out of, the ones over here are made of, um, the frames are PVC pipe, white PVC pipe. And those, it'll be interesting to see their longevity because I'm, I'm not totally certain. And they're covered with a completely different material as well. So we're not sure. Other questions? Yes? How early in the spring have you been able to start? We started um, these in May. This spring did not cooperate at all. We were not able to, and plus there were some, we had some issues getting the seedlings big enough to plant. So that's why it didn't happen until May this year. We could have planted maybe a couple of weeks earlier than we did, but it was mid-May. Um, with the sunflowers, we had to wait until May because they are not very cold tolerant at all. It does depend on the crop. You can grow some of the cooler crops like lettuce and things like that. You can pretty much grow through November, December without any problem and then start again probably in March or April. <laughs> Other questions? Great. Well, hopeful. thank you for coming this evening. Um, come back and see us again next year because Casey will be on the tail. He's just started his project this year, and next year he's going to be on the tail end of it. So you'll get to see uh, what he's actually produced. We'll have some data for you as well next year. So thanks again. <laughs>